Alright guys, UAC Rig 2.6. In this video I'm going to rig this six wheel tipper truck model and show you the new updates. First thing was a common user request for the option to add more wheels. So you'll now find this wheel count button on the UI. Defaults at four, but if you hit it once it will jump to six wheels, again to eight wheels, and finally to a maximum of ten wheels. Hit it once more and it will set it back to four. This number is used only when you import, load, or reference a new rig. So if I set it to 6 and hit load, we're given this extra dimension control here that we can snap to the middle wheel of your model. If I'd chosen 8 wheels, I would have 2 additional controls. If I'd chosen 10 wheels, 3 additional controls. And all 3 are identical in every way. All extra wheels will load with the tire deformation set up just like the other wheels and you can choose to have them load without deformation by selecting the LT button here on the UI as usual. The chassis model is not available on rigs with more than four wheels. It seemed a bit irrelevant to include it. Six to 10 wheeler trucks have an entirely different frame and suspension system to the included chassis model. So let's set up the truck. If we snap our front wheel dimension control to the front wheel center, you may have come across this issue when snapping. I found it was a bit of a pain in the ass to snap when you have lots of vertices behind where you're trying to snap to, like this. Sometimes it would take as many as 8 or 9 attempts to finally hit that correct vertex. So this leads me to the second update on the UI, which is this isolate button. If I select the mesh piece, the one with the center point, and the control I'm trying to snap with, and hit this, everything else in the scene will disappear temporarily. You can now make that snap easily, hit the isolate button again, and your scene will return to how it was. This is a very useful button. Moving on, I'm going to go to the front view, set the guides and the tire width to just outside the tire, pop to a side view, and set that side wall to just outside the rim area. Same again for the rear wheel. Select it and your mesh with the center point. Isolate, snap, and then hit isolate again to return your scene. Notice how the new wheel control has also resized. These attributes are linked by default to the rear wheel because almost every time your middle wheels will match your rear wheels in alignment, radius, width, and sidewall, like they do here in this model. Snapping the middle wheel is done the same way as you would the front or the rear. Isolate on, snap, isolate off. Now because the rest of these attributes are linked, we can just select and set up the rear control and the middle wheels will be good to go. So let's go to a front view, you know the drill by now, side view, and we're done. I'm not going to worry about the steering wheel on this one, I'm going to hide it with the root control show steering wheel attribute. Let's connect the mesh to the rig and go over some of the connection changes. We have this new button here, auto parent mesh. This parents your mesh pieces directly into the rig hierarchy when you use any of the three methods. Nothing has changed here, this is how it always has been. If I hide the rig and skin a tire, the tire disappears because it is located inside here like it usually would be. But if I disable this new button and skin another tire, the tire is skinned but it does not get placed into the hierarchy. This button also works the same way for the constraint method but obviously does nothing for the parent method as that option relies on the hierarchy. Let's turn that back on and select the rest of the tires. If you look down here in the corner, as I hit skin, there is now a progress bar. This gives you a clear idea of how long it will take to connect. Onto the wheels using the parent method. In previous versions of the tool, you had to connect wheels one at a time when using the parent or constraint methods. You can now select them all at once when using any of the three methods and the tool will figure out where everything goes. You may also notice a faster response from the parent and constraint methods as well. So grab all the remaining pieces, or I could just grab the group here and hit body. And that's it, we're all rigged. It drives as you would expect. And let's take a quick look at the middle wheel here. They function exactly like the rear wheels. All of the same attributes. We can let the tires down. The chassis also affects them just like the other wheels. And the fly attribute even works as well. 
The rest of the 2.6 changes were reference related bug fixes. First one was reference mesh would fail to connect. This is now fixed. And the last change, if you reference in a rig at a path and then saved it, when you reloaded that scene, the path would appear to be not connected. The attributes were actually missing from the dropdown. So if you came across this issue, all you need to do is just select your root control and hit the top button here on the UI and that issue will be resolved. That's it for this video. That's version 2.6, which is now live. This update was UI only. So any of your already rigged files will still function normally. No need to reconnect anything or set anything up again. So thank you for all the amazing support and feedback. I really appreciate every comment and email. I'll see you in the next video.